What's going on my Jack brother? Coach Scott here. In today's video, I'm going to share how my workouts have changed during my 34 years of lifting experience and what I've learned along the way. And I would love to hear from you. How has your training evolved over the years? Do you find that you still tend to gravitate towards the same kind of training splits and training techniques? And as you're aging, do you find you need to make more modifications to your training to kind of work around some niggles and aches and pains that you've accumulated after all these years of lifting? I started working out at the age of 13 when my parents bought me one of those York 2000 multi gyms. I absolutely love Loved that machine. Also had one of those York benches with the cement filled weight plates. Still got that bench. Still got those cement filled weight plates. Absolutely loved it. Really came in handy during those two years when the gyms kept closing down there. Um, and at that time, I was really relying on my uncle who was really into weight training and my best friend who was my workout partner at the time. He had an older brother. I think it was about 16 at the time, who just got drafted to the OHL, and he had an incredibly built physique. He was jacked at such a young age. Both those guys got set up on body part split routines, which I absolutely loved. And then in my late teens, that's when I really started getting into the muscle magazines. I absolutely loved Muscle Media 2000, followed a lot of the workout plans in there. Most of them tended to be body part split routines, and really looking around, it seemed to be like all the best physiques being built were using body part split routines at the time, at least that's what I was seeing. That's what I was being exposed to. And then I got into the human kinetics program at the University of Windsor, uh, graduating in kinesiology with honors in movement science. Uh, studied a lot of program design there and really fell in love with Tudor Bampa. Actually, one of my favorite all-time books. This was like a game changer for me because uh, it's how I learned about periodization and incorporating different like mesocycles and microcycles into your training plan and having like strength blocks and hypertrophy blocks. So really eye-opening experience, but once again, really gravitated towards the body part split routines. And once the internet really started gaining speed there and attention, and uh, I started vlogging and blogging myself and reading articles from others, uh, I really found that there was a, a lot of hate towards body part split routines. I never realize that until the age of the internet here. And uh, I really found that I was getting triggered by a lot of these articles. God bless Jay Ferrugia, uh, just a solid bro. Uh, much respect for him. But like back in the day, he was all about like kind of full body workouts. He bashed uh, body part split routines. Uh, it's all about lifting heavy shit. That's all he was about. And it's great to see like now he's way more open-minded and I am way more open-minded. I used to be all body part split routines and he used to be all kind of full body lift heavy shit type stuff. So uh, it's great to see how our mindset and how our training has evolved over the years. Um, so I just continued to roll with body part split routines until it's like 2010, 2011, I think it's 2011, when I came across an article about Lane Norton and his FAT protocol, P-H-A-T, Power Hypertrophy Adaptive Training. Uh, it was an upper-lower push-pull leg split. The upper-lower workouts were power-focused. The push-pull leg uh, workouts were hypertrophy-focused. Exactly what we're doing this month in the uh, Jack to 40 Club. Actually, it'll be for the next two months so like, to finish this year off with that kind of training split. Um, and I was like, hey, that's something I can get behind that. It's not too, too different from a uh, body part split training. I want to see how my body responds to that. And I absolutely love that. I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned from training, once I began to have an open mind and experiment with different training splits, is simply the novelty effect of changing up your training split. Not like the muscle confusion where you're changing your workouts all the freaking time, but following a structured training split for eight to 16 weeks and then changing that split up. Um, you may find, like even research has shown us, I know Brad Schoenfeld came across, like always talks about this, the novelty effect that some people, like it, it may show that like, training two or three times per week is better than one time per week, but maybe it's just because you're only used to training one time per week once you switch it up to two to three times per week. It's like a new stimulus for your body. Your body changes. Same thing. If it was the opposite. If you're doing used to doing two to three times per week, full body workouts, you do a body part split routine. That's a change. And that may cause the, the growth response for you. So the novelty effect of change is a big thing. So um, again, fat, the, the, the power hypertrophy, the, the upper lower push pull legs, but was my first exposure to anything else other than uh, body part split training. And then I decided to try, let's see what just an upper lower split would be like. And I do that like six days per week. I was in the gym often. My training partners at the time loved being in the gym, all right? Six days per week, let's try six, like 
three upper, three lower workouts, alternating back and forth. And then I decided let's do a push-pull leg split. And then came the time of uh, high frequency training became popular, like training five days per week, full body workouts, actually six times per week, I think was the one research paper that came out there. I don't know if it was actually published, ever been published, but a lot of people were referencing the benefits. I think it was Russian or Bulgarian or something like that. Um, that showed the benefits of high frequency training, full body workouts, six days per week. I'm like, you know what? I, I can't stand full body workouts, but let's give this a shot. Again, I became more open-minded. I'm like, why not just experiment with these different approaches? Why, rather than being closed-minded and saying, there's no freaking way that's gonna work. I love these other approaches. I'm just gonna stick with that. I tried it out and maybe it's not my favorite style of training, but I did enjoy it. It was something different. It was a different challenge for my body. I really liked that. Um, you're just stimulating the muscles each day. You weren't like crushing yourself. So um, you kind of felt fresh every single day. But again, after I found like after six weeks of that, I started getting a little bit bored and then started working in some other routines. And again, that's the thing, the novelty effect, the keeping your enthusiasm high um, is a huge component to enjoying this overall training experience and working in different training splits throughout the year. Um, is absolutely phenomenal. Again, you don't want to, you don't need to do it every single month, changing your training split. At least stick with the plan, a split for eight weeks. I highly recommend that. And for the past six years, I have been having an absolute blast creating my own hybrid training splits that challenge my body in ways like it's never been challenged before. All in all, I think all training splits have their place. It's a big reason why you, when you visit the Lose Fat Get Jacked website, all the workout programs that are in there are unique from each other. They are all different kind of training splits. A lot of them are different hybrid splits that I've created myself. And some of them are the typical traditional like push-pull leg splits, which I really love. And some are um, some different kinds of um, body part split routines, which I absolutely love as well. I just, I can't encourage you enough to have an open mind, experiment with different training splits and see how your body responds. Again, take advantage of that novelty effect of just changing your program, changing your split every eight to 16 weeks, just to spark that new challenge for your body and spark your enthusiasm, just keep your training fun. Another lesson I learned during my 34 years of lifting experience is not to throw the entire kitchen sink of advanced training techniques at a specific workout. There was a time where like from my first exercise, I would do eight sets of eight. Second exercise, drop sets. Third exercise, extended rest pause set. Like every exercise had an advanced training technique attached to it. And nowadays uh, I may incorporate one advanced training technique in an entire workout plan. And there's some months where I don't include any advanced training techniques at all, just roll with straight sets. Uh, another lesson that I learned is that I was a high volume junkie. I was addicted to the training stimulus. So I was doing like four or five exercises per body part per workout uh, and realizing that your body adapts to that high volume and the importance of periodizing your training volume throughout the year. Uh, so there's gonna be times where you're gonna to wanna to pull that volume back and do low volume training, allowing your body to fully recover, the fatigue to dissipate, and your muscles to resensitize to the training stimulus, which is most important there because as you start to bump the volume up again each month, it's gonna, your body's gonna respond better to that training volume than it did when you're holding that volume high all the time. So it's now, it's unfamiliar with the higher training volume. So as you bump it up, uh, your body is going to be forced to adapt and grow. And then again, you're gonna get back up, reach a point where your body can no longer handle any more training volume and you're gonna have to pull it back again. So that was a huge learning lesson for me. And I say one of the biggest learning lessons for me is just having a heightened sense of awareness with how my body is not only responding to the overall training plan, how it's handling the muscle damage and the recovery, and when to pull back, when I know recognizing those signs that, all right, I'm at a point where I'm overreaching a little bit too much, it's time to pull it back. And when the training stimulus is, is when my body is adapting to a certain training stimulus and I need to bump it up again, having that heightened sense of awareness with that, but also the heightened sense of awareness during my workouts, like when to call an audible. Like I may walk into the gym feeling strong and then the goal is to do like five to six repetitions for an exercise do my first workup set, so like, man, I just I, I just don't have it today. Call an audible, go a little bit lighter, uh, do some higher repetitions, or maybe an exercise just doesn't feel good to me that day. There's some days where there's an exercise that feels good for me all the time and I'm just not feeling it that workout. 
I may swap it out just for that workout in particular, knowing that the next week I'm probably going to be back to normal again. So just call it like you don't want to abandon an exercise altogether. You want to play around with it to see why it's not feeling right to you. But in that workout, it's okay to call an audible at that time. Again, it's all about having fun. It's all about living your life to the fullest. You want to feel your best. Don't be like stuck. Don't be stubborn um, and just bash your head against it. It's all about progressive overload. I gotta just keep hammering at this no matter what. I've gotta hit a personal best today because if I don't if I don't do one more rep or add a little bit of weight to the bar, how am I gonna make any gains? They're not like, listen to your body. So not afraid to call audibles, not afraid to go lighter when I need to or heavier when I want to. Like just paying attention to how my body's responding and um, not being so obsessed with the minutia, the little details like time under tension and making sure that you're lowering it at a three or four second count and then exploding on the way up one second, pausing here. Like, I don't think about all that stuff. And even like when it comes to rest periods, I no longer time my rest periods. I, I rest for as long as I need to recover between sets so I can give the best of myself to the following sets. So again, just for me, it's all about having fun, having that heightened sense of awareness, listening to my body, and just enjoying the camaraderie in the gym. I think that's that's the biggest thing at this stage in the game, doing what's going to allow my body to feel its best in that moment. What's gonna allow me to get the most out of that training experience. And I do find like nowadays it's, um, I, again, I've changed from doing last set, best set, where my first set was like two to three reps in, the, in reserve. Second set was one to two reps in reserve. Last set was all a momentary muscular failure. Now I'm like, first set might be one rep in reserve. Um, even still, I still might push it to true momentary muscular failure. And like definitely second, third set, true momentary muscular failure. I'm crushing my workouts, getting in and out of the gym a lot quicker than I ever had them before, like 45 minutes on average, up to 60 minutes at the most, and absolutely thriving from that, like thriving from this experience, just giving the best of myself to every single set, and just being done a lot sooner because I can't give any more to, to that training session. So that's been a fun experience. And again, it's all about having an open mind. Like even number of days I'm training throughout the years, I varied from four days to six days per week. And I really don't have a right or wrong answer when it comes to that. There's some weeks where I will be in the gym. I say most of the time, five days per week. Some days I'm like, I wanna be in the gym six days per week. I'm feeling great. Why not get in there and have some fun, enjoy the camaraderie, enjoy the atmosphere. And there's some weeks where I want to do a little bit more yoga or something like that. So I'll pull it back to four days per week. There is no right or wrong answer. And that's really what I'm finding with a lot of this training. It's just having fun, following a blueprint, seeing how my body responds to that blueprint, make notes on that, and then change it up. Follow a new blueprint, see how my body responds, change it. Just have fun in the process and just enjoy this experience to the fullest. I hope you enjoyed the insights that I've shared from my 34 years of lifting experience. Again, I would love to hear what your experiences have been uh, throughout your years of lifting. So share them in a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you did enjoy this video, please do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that alert button so notified each time I upload a video. If you know a fellow bro who benefit from watching today's video, please do me a favor and share it with them. And before you go, don't forget to download your free guide, Lose Fat, Get Jacked. Have yourself an amazing day. Catch you in the next video.